Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be tier ranking every single major Walking Dead character. I have a crap load of characters here that we're going to be talking about today. I am ranking them not on how much of a good person they are. I'm not going to be ranking them like that. I don't find that way to be enjoyable. I'm ranking them solely based on how good of a character I believe they are, how interesting they are, how entertaining they are, how well written they are, and of course, how good the actor or actress's portrayal is of the character. So just because I have a character in S does not mean I defend this character in terms of their personality. They could be a god awful human being and still be an S tier, or they could be the sweetest person on earth and still be an F tier. I originally said I wasn't going to do this again because I just did it back in March, about, what was that, nine months ago? But I decided I would again because a lot of people were asking for it, and I also realized my opinions have changed quite a bit since then, whether it's because we got new episodes and so I saw different characters in different ways, or I just rewatched certain episodes and my opinions just naturally changed a bit. Also, this list has way more characters than the list we did last time, so there's a lot more characters to talk about. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. Starting off with the man Rick Grimes, he's obviously going in S tier. I mean, there's really not much to say there because it's pretty obvious he's gonna go into S tier. This is not only my favorite Walking Dead character, He's probably my favorite character in fiction, period. I think his arc is just incredible. He goes through so much in this series, and it's all incredible stuff. He basically starts this series in a position of just fear of, of course, wanting to find his family. He's not sure what's going on, and eventually he does find his family, and he has to go through a lot of difficult, difficult decisions, such as killing Shane, which is definitely the most difficult thing he had to do, at least at that point. There's probably more difficult things later on, but that's one of the most difficult things he had to do because that was his best friend for such a long time, and he had to kill him to defend himself against him, and um, such a great episode. And then you get to see his just change in his character over the course of a couple seasons because of you know a lot of things happening, like Lori's death, and he just starts to go crazy. He starts to lose it, and you finally get to see him kind of come back to sanity in season four, but the governor completely ruins that for him. He completely takes away any hope Rick had for the world to the point where Rick becomes so savage in season five. He is just murdering people left and right. I mean, the people deserve it, but still he's doing it in really brutal ways to the point where he considers himself part of The Walking Dead with that really iconic quote where he says, we are The Walking Dead. That is how Rick was. And then it took Alexandria, All Out War, Carl's death for him to kind of come back to humanity a little bit and he ended off being just a well-rounded person completely and we're still going to have more stories for him to come in the Rick and Michonne series and I cannot wait to see that but this character is just amazing and Andrew Lincoln's performance is without a doubt the best acting I've seen in television history ever. Next up is going to be Morgan Jones. Now, the thing about Morgan is we obviously see him in more than just The Walking Dead. We also see him in Fear the Walking Dead. I'm only really talking about his Walking Dead version right now because his Fear the Walking Dead version, honestly, I'm not that crazy about. I think he has some interesting stories here and there, but he's not that great. Not nearly as interesting as he was in The Walking Dead. But what I love about this character so much and the reason I'm going to put him in S tier is because it is a really deep exploration of a character with a mental illness. Now, a lot of people call this character poorly written because he's very inconsistent. Obviously, we see that, you know, season six to season seven and eight, which was the main seasons he was in, obviously. He was only in like one or two episodes in the seasons before that. But when we see him in these seasons, he goes from this having this all life is precious mentality, this very large extreme of not wanting to kill anyone unless he absolutely has to, which he even didn't want to do it if he had to. He it took him a long, it took it took a lot out of him to even just kill one person because of this, you know, philosophy he kind of had over the years because of all the different things Eastman did with him to try to bring him back to sanity. So you get this character who just does not want to kill anyone at all. And then he just completely switches in season seven, where he's now like, I'm gonna kill all the saviors. And then season eight, he's just rogue. He's killing everyone and anyone, and he'll even kill people who try to get in his way. Like, he does not care anymore. And people call that inconsistent, they call that poorly written, but I don't think they understand that. I, I really do believe, and this isn't like confirmed or anything, but I can kind of tell from the character, just from, you know, different things he does in it. He likely has some sort of personality disorder, most likely bipolar personality disorder. That's what I kind of picked up off of from his character, just watching him in the series. That's what it felt like going from such an extreme 
change like that just to me felt like it was fitting in that and he was even seeing hallucinations in season eight like that's how far he was and i do believe it was all caused because of all the ptsd he went through obviously seeing your own wife as a walker killing your own son right in front of you that's gonna do some traumatic shit to you and i do believe that is how this character turned into what he is and i love the exploration of his character i think it's one of the best parts of season six through eight and then like i said fear the walking dead i don't think he's as interesting but he's still there so morgan jones fantastic character for sure lori lori gets so much unnecessary hate it is insane so of course like i said we're not talking about her as a person even if we were i don't think she's a terrible person like everyone makes her out to be like she thought her husband was dead okay she's not really cheating on her husband because yeah she thought he was dead yeah it's a little weird to get with your husband's best friend sure but it's not the it's not the end of the world uh, who cares you know it's not that big of a deal he, he she wasn't cheating um and after that like yeah she she can be a little bit annoying sometimes but most of the time she's just fine like i don't really see the issue with her character 99 percent of the time and her death was just incredibly emotional so I, I i liked laurie a lot i don't know why people don't like her i'm gonna put her in b she had a big part to play in the story especially for rick's character and obviously also shane's character so i thought she was great shane though S tier. I mean, Shane is what makes season two what it was. Shane completely elevates season two another level. I mean, season two would probably be one of my least favorite seasons if Shane wasn't in it, but because of him, it went up a little bit because Shane is just so, 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 so great in that season, man. I just absolutely love John Bernthal's portrayal of this character. You get to see someone just descend into madness this is the best example of a character descending into madness and you see little hints of it in season one but it doesn't fully come out until he kills otis and then of course you know leading to him eventually trying to kill rick and you see these little sparks of him possibly coming back to humanity like him possibly coming back around and, and being a better person but then that completely just gets destroyed when he has that talk with Lori, and Lori's like i i I don't love you like I don't have the feelings for you that you have for me so please just you know stop that you know that she basically just says that to Shane and it's a very nice conversation they have in episode 12 but that just snaps him and that's when he decides he needs to kill Rick he's gonna do it because he thinks he needs to be the one to protect Lori and Carl Shane is just a masterful character I have to put him in S Carl poor Carl man I feel so bad because he has so much potential he really, really does. And I want to put him higher. I do. But I really think season five through eight, Carl is just not that good. I'm putting him in C. I'm putting him in C. I'm not sure where I put him in my last ranking, but I'm going to put him in C. He has a big importance to the story. He does. But I just, I don't like him that much. Like, I don't, he's great in the first four seasons. I do think he's great in those seasons. He can be a little annoying here and there, but I mean, he's a kid. Of course, he's going to be a little annoying here and there. And they do a lot of great things with him, especially in season three. I like how he starts to become a badass in a lot of different ways. He has to put down his own mom and a lot of emotions that he has there. And then he starts becoming, you know, a big brother to Judith because, you know, he has to, obviously. And in season four, his his reaction to thinking Judith is dead is one of my favorite scenes from Chandler Riggs. But then once like season five rolls around, I just don't feel like they did anything that great with this character anymore. I mean, most of the comic Carl arcs weren't even given to him they were given to other characters i mean think about it the whole lizzie and mika thing that happened in a similar way in the comics but it actually involved carl having to kill a kid rather than lizzie doing it or carol doing it so they, they did just completely remove that story from him and then obviously we never got to see his storyline with lydia that we get to see in the comics which was in my opinion the best stuff with carl in the comics so we never got to see the best parts of carl so yeah, I don't know. The TV show version just didn't do much for me. I, I didn't like him that much. He had a couple cool things here and there. Sure, I liked when he got his eyes shot out. That whole thing was interesting, but they didn't do any deep arcs with him. He just... Season 8, I, I do like how they handled his death. I know a lot of people despise that. I think they could have definitely done it better, but ultimately, I do think that it had a big impact on the series, and that's why I'm putting him in C instead of like D or something, because I honestly would put him in D if they didn't give him such an impactful death to this the whole franchise now we have morales and i mean he's okay i guess like i i don't really have anything too positive to say about him they brought him back in season eight just for funsies and i thought it was cool because it had an impact on the story for for rick he showed that 
you know, not all the saviors were always bad people because Rick was able to see that firsthand by seeing someone who he used to, you know, be friends with back in season one. But I mean, he's not that interesting other than that, so I'm just going to put him in D. Carol? I want to say S. I don't love her in season 10, though. I think season 10 is my, my, the weakest point of Carol for me personally. But I mean, she has quite a few great storylines. I, I gotta put her in S. She is definitely the most changed character from, from when she was first introduced. I mean, she goes through massive changes. Like, just compare her to season one to now, it's insane how, how much she, she develops. I think most people will, will agree that her character from season four to five is definitely where she's at her peak. I, I do think when they started to make her kind of all like, oh, I don't want to kill anymore, she was definitely less interesting. And look, it makes sense why they did that to her. I don't think it's a bad storyline to go for because, yeah, we can't just have her be a cold, hard killer her whole life. Like she has to have these storylines where like, you know, she starts to realize she doesn't want to do that anymore. She doesn't want to keep killing it. I do think it was interesting. And, and then they kind of just drop that whole thing into season nine and then it doesn't really ever come back. So. I don't know. It was weird how they d did all that and I wasn't crazy about it. So part of me wants to drop her to A just because of what they did with her there. And then season 10, I just felt like she was way too reckless. But I want to keep her in S just because she has so many amazing storylines otherwise. So it's hard to say that she deserves to get dropped down just because of her couple of her bad storylines. You know, I might, I might have to drop her to A. I'm sorry, Carol. I have to do it. I have to. There's just a couple of storylines with her that I'm not crazy about. There's just a couple. Yeah, that's unfortunate because she does deserve S, but I feel like I feel like I, I don't like her as much as some of these other characters. Yeah, we'll leave it there for now. Okay. Sophia, um, you're you're just gonna sit in D. No, you'll sit in C. You're not you're not that bad. Yeah, you'll sit in C. I mean, you're just like the thing is, I'm not like I can't. It's hard to compare smaller characters against larger characters, obviously. So I'm just kind of rating them on how interesting are they for the type of character they are, right? So obviously if they're a smaller character, I'm not expecting as much of them as I would from a character like Carl. So like obviously Carl has way more to do than Sophia, right? But Sophia is a much smaller character. She's in much less of the show, so it makes more sense. So my expectations for her are much lower. So if you understand, you got, you know, that might make a little bit more sense as to why they would be on the same level, even if Carl definitely has way more storylines than Sophia. Daryl, S tier for sure. So Daryl from seasons one to like maybe seven, I absolutely love. Like that is where, where, where he's deserving of S because of those seasons. And even season nine, he's pretty good, I think. I don't like him in season eight. I think that was one of the worst arcs they had for Daryl was in season eight. They made him completely reckless but not in a way that made sense for his character. It just did not fit at all. And then season 10 and 11, he's definitely the main character. Like he's definitely probably the most prominent character in those two seasons, but I always felt like his character was kind of one note in those two seasons. So I definitely don't know if I love his portrayal in those last two seasons. I don't hate it though. It's not, it's not bad. I didn't like despise it. I just don't think it was as good as those first seven seasons, but those first seven seasons were like prime stuff for Daryl. Honestly, the more I'm thinking about it, I kind of want to move Carol back to S. Like, yeah, she had a couple of bad storylines, but so did Daryl. And like, they're good storylines made up for it, though. I I don't want to put them in A just because of one or two bad storylines. S doesn't mean they're absolutely perfect and they've never had any low points in the series at all. It just means... It just means I really love them. I really love them as a character. I think they're definitely the most interesting parts of this series. So they're both deserving of S, even if there's a couple points in the series that I didn't love about them. You also have to keep in mind, they're in the series the longest out of anyone. Daryl and Carol have been in there for all 11 seasons from start to finish, right? So it's bound that they're more likely to have storylines that I don't love as much. When you compare it to Shane, who's only been in it for two seasons, there's less time for them to fuck up his character. So. I, well, I, S is fair. I'm, I'm changing my mind. I might change my mind quite a few times in the middle of this video, but I'm, I'm giving them both S. Merle is a pretty great character. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually gonna put him in A. He is interesting because he's a villain for a decent amount of season three. Even in season one, you, you probably call him a villain because the one episode he's in, he's definitely causing conflict to the main group. He's not at all being a good person in any way, shape, or form. 
And then you get to season three and you could tell he's a bad person, right? You could you tell he's doing bad things. He has bad intentions. But what I think is so interesting is that he's not like purely evil, like someone like the governor, right? Where there's just full evil. You can see little sparks of promise in this, this person. You could see that he could become a better person given the right circumstances. Like you can tell maybe if he was raised in the right environment, he wouldn't be acting the way he acts throughout the season. So that's why I feel like he was complex in that way. And you get his semi-redemption. It's not really a full redemption. He just does like a little moment there where he lets Michonne go and then he tries to fight the governor for his last stand thing. And that was a great way to end the character. I think it was the perfect way to finish it off. I just, I just, I don't think he's as, he's not as good as the other characters, but he still does have a lot of promise because I think having complex characters like that, they're not all bad. Like they're not the most, you know, evil person in the world, but they still have a lot of those negative traits to them. I think it's something, it's, we need more characters like that. And he obviously did completely change Daryl's character. And Daryl even mentions him all the time throughout the series. It's always nice to hear him get mentioned. Um, he definitely affected his life in a lot of negative ways. And to get to see Daryl change because of all the good people he's surrounded by shows that Daryl was only you know, kind of a dick in season one because of hanging out with his brother and the way his dad treated him and all that environment as well. So it just goes to show that maybe if Merle spent the same amount of time as Daryl with these other characters for a long period of time, maybe eventually he would have become a better person like Daryl was. Probably would have taken a lot longer because obviously, you know, Daryl is not nearly as bad as Merle, but um, I do think that's an interesting dynamic that the characters had. Now we got Ed. So Ed, I mean, he's obviously a piece of shit. There's really no redeeming qualities about this man as far as as far as we saw. I never saw any redeeming qualities from him. But his character's not like a bad character. So like, you know, I'm not like, again, I'm not rating them on how good of a person they are. I think I have to say that a million times because nobody understands that for some reason. Even though I say it a million times, I'm going to get comments saying like, how could you put this terrible person not in the bottom tier? I'm not ranking them on that. That's a stupid way to rank characters. I just, I don't think it's a fun way to do it. Um, His character isn't that interesting though either. Like he, he's just there to develop Carol in a way that like, not on a develop, it it kind of starts Carol's character at off, right? It shows where she's at in season one, and we get to see how Carol can change and overcome what she's been through because of Ed. So his purpose is pretty much that, that's all he is. So I'm not gonna put him an F because he's not like a bad character. He's just, he's just Ed, I don't know. He's, so I'm gonna put him a D. Jackie doesn't do really anything in this show, <laughs> to be honest. Um, she had a nice little moment there with Jenner at the end, I guess. I'll put her in probably D, honestly, because what did she do? I don't know. She never really had many lines, to be honest. Jim, I like Jim because they they had him like get bit, and it was the first time we saw someone get bit in the show. But he's not that interesting either. Um, Glenn, Glenn's S tier. You gotta put Glenn in S tier. Glenn is a top tier character for sure. He is probably one of the most innocent characters on the show. I mean, that was pretty much presented in season six very well when it shows that he never killed someone up until that point in season six, episode 12. And it was actually kind of ironic that the moment he killed someone a couple episodes later, he ends up getting killed himself. So interesting how they decided to do that. But I think his ending was perfect as well. I think the way it develops a lot of characters going forward after that was incredibly impactful. But his character before that, he's just such a fantastic part of this the show i mean i just absolutely love every single scene that glenn is in pretty much especially season two and three glenn that's like some of my favorite stuff from glenn where he's first falling in love with maggie i think their storyline is just really amazing um definitely the best relationship on the show for sure so glenn glenn's amazing he's great uh we have andrea okay andrea gets a lot of hate i don't think she's god awful i think people kind of they don't really judge her character the right way because they always judge her like why are you sleeping with the governor all these things but like she doesn't know the governor's a piece of shit though like that's the thing she doesn't know these things we know those things so obviously we're able to judge her because we know them but she, we she doesn't so i never judged her for doing stuff like that i thought she was annoying because she wouldn't go quicker when she was trying to get the pliers off in the finale when she, she ended up getting bit but uh, i don't know she's not like bad or anything she's just in terms of personality i wouldn't rate her that high i do think what she did with like beth like she was just allowing beth to like decide her fate practically it was like all right you gotta chill with that but um 
I thought she had a couple interesting storylines. I liked her her back and forth with Dale. So I'm gonna put her in C just because like she had some good stuff there, but I, I don't think she was nearly as interesting as a lot of other characters. Um, but I actually do like her position in season three. But honestly, no, I like her position more than a lot of people. I'm gonna put her in B. I think she's deserving a B. Again, the hate is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. She's not like I get it. She's not like Comic Andrea, but she never was in the first place. She never felt like Comic Andrea, so I was completely fine with them just completely changing course there and basically replacing Comic Andrea with Michonne. I was completely fine with that. I'll be honest, but I still I think she's fine. She's okay. I don't I don't see the big issue. I don't get it. Dale is so underrated, man. He's going in A. Dale is the fucking man. So first of all, the actor, incredible. He's incredible. He wanted off the show because of Frank Darabont leaving. He's very close to Frank Darabont, which is unfortunate because he does have a lot of cool comic storylines, but a lot of those storylines involve Andrea anyways. So, I mean, if you're not going to have Andrea past season three, you might as well not have Dale past season two. It's not a big deal, but I love his death. I think his death is one of the one of the coolest deaths in the show because it's simple. It's just a walker, right? But the circumstances of it are really impactful because the group was like broken at this point. They were fighting over what to do with Randall and everything. And Dale was the only one defending Randall's life. And because he died, they decided to honor Dale by not killing Randall. They were going to let Randall loose because of that, which is kind of ironic because it's similar to, to Carl's death because Carl dying is what led to Rick keeping Negan alive. So, you know, Dale dying was what led them to decide to keep Randall alive. Obviously, Shane said, fuck that and went to go kill him anyways. But I really love that story. I think that whole episode with Dale just trying to fight against killing him was so impactful just seeing him in tears because he's trying to convince everyone and they're just not listening and nobody's on his side it's actually kind of sad like seeing no one on this man's side he's just he's very wise too he's just such a great warm-hearted person he's he's a fantastic character I, I don't think he's s but he's great he's pretty cool amy yeah, I mean, she was cool and all, but I, I, I don't know, D is, I'm just gonna put her in D. A lot of characters are gonna end up in D if they're just like, okay, characters that are just kind of there, I guess. Uh, T-Dog, they could have done way more with T-Dog. I'm gonna put him in C because he doesn't do much, obviously. He's not really, he, he's present until season three, but he never feels like he is, to be honest. He's always just in the background. And I think they could have given him more storylines. I don't think they need to keep him alive much longer. They just probably could have given him at least one arc of some kind. You know, they'd had a couple of scenes with him, especially his back and forth with Dale, but they didn't do much with it ever, so I can't really give him much of a high rating, but he's definitely better than these characters. Dr. Jenner, again, I don't know. He's okay, I guess. I'll put him there as well. He's just, he's just fine. I don't know. He's... Uh, I don't really care that much to be honest. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna put any characters in F now that I think about it. Like who's really deserving of F tier? We'll see. We're finally on to season two. It took us this long to get to season two. Why well, was a lot of season one characters? Well, there's there's your season one characters. It's a hell of a lot of characters. Maggie. Easy S. We're gonna rank the characters in the tiers probably at the end, by the way. I'm not gonna do that right away, but Maggie's S tier for sure. She is phenomenal. I think she's my favorite. Uh, she's my favorite female character for sure out of out of all of them, definitely. So I would probably have her in like the second or third place in S tier when we get there. She's just phenomenal. She has probably the most suffering on this show. Now, of course, I'm sure most characters did suffer just off screen though. Like I'm sure they lost their families and we just haven't seen it. I'm sure a lot of characters went through a lot more. But we get to see most of Maggie's suffering more than any other character because she loses a lot. She loses, you know, the farm, everyone on the farm that was there. Then she loses Herschel, she loses Beth, she loses Glenn, she loses a ton. And you no, know, it's all really sad, all of it. And this character just, she gets in this leadership position at Hilltop, which I think is one of the best roles for her. And then obviously into season, you know, eight and, and onward when she was just completely vengeful against Negan and then eventually had to come to terms with the fact that Negan is still around out of his cell and she has to not forgive him, but just accept the fact that he's going to be around and she has to work with him pretty much all of season 11. So there's just so many things I do with her that I just fucking love. And even her season like three storyline with what, what the governor does to her and, and how she has to overcome that, like... It just makes me so happy that she stayed around this long, you know? I was really worried she was going to get killed off at some point, or if the actress would want to leave. Of course, she did leave for just a little bit, but it wasn't too long. 
And then when she came back, I mean, her presence was felt in season 11. Every scene with her, I was just so happy to have Maggie back. And Lauren Cohen is incredible, man. Her acting, especially in season seven premiere, is just top notch. It's just so fucking good, man. This character, if she ever was killed off, I would absolutely lose it. But thankfully, she never was. I'm very excited to see her in the new Walking Dead spinoff called Dead City. Herschel, also S tier. I know there's going to be quite a few S tier characters for sure. Because, I mean, look, there's a lot of solid, solid characters in the series. But Herschel is such a great person all around. I mean, you see him going from... You see him go from this person who, who just does not want these new people on his farm. He's very much like, you can stay here for a little bit, but then get the fuck out of here. Like, I don't, want, I don't want you here too much longer. But he starts to kind of come around to just allowing them to stay. And when he sees the, the harmful threat of the walkers outside firsthand by seeing what the walkers are like straight up in the barn, he kind of comes around and realizes, okay, I'll let them stay here. And then he does... And he becomes such a just amazing part to the main group. And then into season three and four, he's just like this really wise man. He has the really he's smart things to say. He's always talking to Rick. Rick is always asking him for advice. And then season four, he has that amazing story during the sickness arc where he is just trying his hardest to keep people healthy. And then he gets killed off in the most tragic way possible by the governor chopping off his head. And it is such a perfect end for this character. Rest in peace to Scott Wilson because, wow, he just did a fantastic job with this character and he will always be one of my favorite characters in The Walking Dead. Beth is extremely underrated, I'm not gonna lie. I just think the only thing holding her back from being higher, I'm gonna put her in B, the only thing holding her back from being higher is her death not being that great. I didn't love her death, I thought it was a really shocking moment, it was like a really wow moment, but I just don't like the circumstances of it. I don't like how it led to it, I don't like the hospital arc. None that I liked, but her character before that, she was such a bright point in the series. I love how she was always singing and stuff and just trying to give people hope. She had a little storyline in season two where she was suicidal, but she kind of came back around to to kind of just being a little more hopeful in the later seasons where she would just be singing to people. And I, I just I loved all those storylines. I thought they were really, really, really great for her. And like they didn't do that much with her beyond that. But I liked her little back and forth with Daryl, especially in season four B, the episode where she was just looking for alcohol the whole episode. Not a great episode, but I do think for Beth's character, it does do a lot for her. And I, I will say it is it is one of the better things about this. You know, I'm, I'm she's going at A. I, I feel like I've been saying a lot of positive things enough to the point where I'm, I, I think she's deserving of A tier for sure. So, yeah, Jimmy, I think this is his name. I don't know. I'm going to put him in F. <laughs> she's just this face just pisses me off. <laughs> just. What does he fucking do? He's on the farm for th 13 episodes we have in there, and he just doesn't do shit. I don't know. Patricia, yeah, she's okay. I'll put her in D. Otis also is, he's the man, but, you know, he's, he doesn't do anything, so. I <laughs> Randall, it's a cool little story with Randall, but I don't know. I'll put I'll put him in D as well. There's a lot of people I just, if I don't really care that much, I'm probably going to put them in D. That That's like the spot for that. I'm just putting Jimmy here because, I don't know, he just pissed me off. Michelle. <laughs> Michonne's gonna go in S tier as well. I think I think she's deserving of S tier. Honestly, I'm not sure there's gonna be any more characters in S tier other than one more I can think of, but I'm not sure actually. No, there might be a few more. There's gotta be at least a few more, right? I don't know. Michonne's phenomenal though. I mean, obviously. I mean, she she's definitely one of the best actresses in, in the series. Well, Denai Greer is incredible. And at first, she's this very quiet, timid person who just does not open herself up to anyone. She's just very cold-hearted. She's a survivor completely. But she slowly throughout season four or five and onward start, slowly opens herself up to, to Rick and the others, especially in Clear. That was one of the best episodes for Michonne where she was opening up to Carl more than anyone. And, and Carl's really what brought her to, to kind of feel like she can open up herself more to other people like Rick and everyone else. And then we get storylines with her you know, later on in later seasons where you know, she becomes a constable at Alexandria, and then she eventually becomes the leader of Alexandria in season nine onward. And again, for, like just like Rick, very excited to see her in the show with Rick and and her her sword as well is just so much it's so much fun to see her kill walkers with that sword. It is always incredible. Judith, I kind of wish they gave more stories with Judith in seasons ten and eleven. If I'm gonna be honest, they did a little bit with her, 
but nothing that would put her a bit higher. I honestly, I'm gonna put her higher than Carl though. That might be like just insane to some people. Like how can you possibly put her above Carl? But you gotta really take into account a couple of things. So first of all, I do think her, I feel more emotion when she's delivering emotional scenes. Like there's a couple of scenes in like episode five of season 11 where she's talking to Rosita about how she's kind of sad that she, uh, you know, Mrs. Carl or, and her, she, she's worried she's gonna forget about Carl, I believe that's what the whole thing was and Rick and Michonne and all of them. And it's a really emotional scene. And I, I think about her actress, so she's just really great at delivering those scenes and it always just makes you feel the emotions, right? Especially even in season nine. I think she had some of the more interesting stuff like the back and forth with Negan and stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff there I really, really love. I just kind of wish they'd gave her a little bit more. She's Judith, like she deserved to have more than what she was given. But I don't know, I'm gonna put her in B though. I, I do like her more than Carl. I, I'm just gonna say it, I do. Axel, Axel's gonna be a C tier to me. He was a cool, cool character, you know? He was all right. <laughs> A little weird at first, you know, kind of, kind of pervy, but you know, he came, he came around a little bit, and then he got shot in the head, and yeah, he was all right. Uh, Oscar, Oscar was all right. I didn't like him as much as Axel though, but I think I'll put him on the same tier though. He's still, he's still close to it to being as good, but not as good. Tomas was a cool little villain. He was only there for one episode though, so I can't really say he's that great. Same with Andrew. He was just there for like one little thing. He, he caused a lot of problems though. Basically caused. Uh, Lori's death when you think about it. So that, that dude is a fucking villain and a half when you really think about it. Um, the governor, S tier. Again, not rating them on how good of a person they are. <laughs> I gotta make that very clear every time I do it. The governor is an incredible character though. He is outstanding. I know there's so many people in S and people are gonna be like, well, how can you put so many people in S? Because they're all deserving of it. They are, they are, these are the best people from this franchise right here, man. I just, love all of their performances especially i mean every single one of these actors and actresses are just outstanding but the governor is such a sinister person but he hides it so well so when you first meet him he just seems to be this very charming person who's just you know like he's just he's just he's just a cool dude he's a pretty solid leader most likely but then you start learning little things about him and especially the way they reveal the way the way they reveal him as the bad guy is just so great when he goes to that group of military guys and he just pulls out a gun and shoots the guy right there such a fantastic way to introduce his character and then we get to see him with the walker head fish tanks like just so many awesome things there and the whole arc with the governor i was was fucking amazing and not much more to say it was, he's he's fantastic i think pretty self-explanatory uh, Martinez, all right. I'm probably gonna throw him. I'll throw him in C. He, he he has a little bit more to do than some of these other characters down here, but it's not that much more. Milton was pretty cool. I'll put him in C. Uh, Karen, eh, you're 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 okay, I guess. Tyrese, Tyrese is one I would like. Of, I would have liked some more from him to be honest, but I can't say I absolutely loved his character. Put him in B. I think B sounds pretty good for Tyrese. I mean, I didn't like his death, to be honest. Like, I liked how it was done in terms of all the cool editing and stuff in that episode, but I felt like it just came out of nowhere and it didn't really do much for the story other than Sasha. But Sasha was already affected from Bob's death anyways, so it's not like Tyrese's death did that much more to her character. So, I don't know. I wasn't crazy about that whole thing, but eh, he had a cool storyline, season four especially, when he was just completely enraged after Karen and David were killed. He, uh, that was probably his best storyline for sure, so I really love that. Sasha? Oof. Yeah. Not one of my favorites, I'm gonna be honest. I, I really get a lot of, uh... You know what I'm gonna do? I gotta do this. I have to do this. I'm sorry. We're gonna do this midway through. Okay, we're gonna split this up a little bit here. So we're gonna do... I don't care. Okay, and then this is gonna go there and it's gonna be D. And the reason I need to do that is because I need to specify that these are not characters that are bad. They're just characters I don't care about, right? It's so like, I, I'm not putting them at the bottom because I just don't really care, right? I don't, I don't have any sort of feelings towards any of that. Like, I don't, I don't, they just don't, they don't affect me negatively or positively, really. So that's why I'm putting them in, I don't care. It, fit, it fits a little bit better. But then D is gonna be for characters that I just, straight up have issues with how their characters are in the show you know what i mean i think that makes more sense to me 
yeah, I like that. I like that. If, if, it's better. It's better. Sasha's not going in D, though. I, I, I might have put her in D in my previous one, but I, I, she's come around to me a little bit because she has great storylines, especially in Season 5. Like, she's fantastic in Season 5. But my issue is, is, is she kind of sucks in every other season. Like, that's the thing. I, I don't like her when she's first introduced. She's, I mean, she's okay. She's not, like, bad. She's just not, like... She doesn't have anything interesting to her. You know, she gets sick in season four and that's about it. And then she has that little relationship with Bob. And then when she loses Bob, that's when she starts to become interesting. And I do like her character in season five. And I do like how she's presented in Alexandria, how she just can't kind of assimilate into this community. Season six, I, I guess they do some stuff with her, but then they do the Abraham relationship. And I just didn't like that at all. Didn't think that was a relationship that worked. I never thought they had chemistry. But then we get to season seven and she has one of my least favorite deaths in the f entire franchise. And she just, she just kind of annoys me. She, she just goes on this, she goes on that suicide mission to kill Negan and she, I, she doesn't even succeed. And she doesn't, I don't, she doesn't even fucking try to succeed to be honest. She, she fails at it completely. Um, I don't know. I just, I, like I said, the one season definitely holds her up a little bit, but I feel like want to give her C. I'll give her C. I'll give her C. She's not deserving of D. She's not. But I'll give her C. Okay. Bob. Bob's fun. He's fun. That's all I have to say. He's fun. <laughs> Lizzie and Mika. I'm going to put Lizzie in A. Her character is fucking twisted. But really interesting. I love that story. Mika is, is pretty cool too. But, you know, she's not as interesting as Lizzie. But I love this little storyline between those two characters in season four it's one of my favorite parts of that season so yeah she's deserving of a um lily d uh, she was a waste <laughs> like the problem with her is they killed her off off screen right they had this big important story with her with the governor and they just got rid of her like i guess the actress didn't want to continue maybe but they could have at least shown her die like you know what i mean I, having that off screen just was so crazy to me didn't like that uh tara underrated as fuck man i don't know why people hate tara so much i don't get it tara's great she's awesome she's hilarious she's fun she has that one annoying storyline in season eight where she's just trying to kill dwight every two seconds but that's about it. Everything else about her is great. She's great. She's awesome. Love the actress too. She does a great job. Uh, this Penny, not not Penny. That was the Governor's daughter. This is Megan. Her death was kind of stupid. Uh, still love that episode though. I don't know. She's okay. I don't care. I guess I'll put her down there. <laughs> Abraham is gonna be an A tier. Um, he has a lot of cool storylines. I really like how he was on the brink of 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 killing himself in season five. Well, not season five, but in the flashback in season five. But then we sh we saw that Eugene giving him this mission to go find a cure was what brought him back to to not wanting to actually, you know, c go through with it. So and then when he actually learns that Eugene was lying, that's when he just completely just loses it for quite a bit. And then he comes back around. He becomes a really interesting character in season six, especially. I really enjoyed his character. And then, of course, he gets the death um, by the hands of Lucille. And it's a pretty good death. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, Rosita... I probably had her in like C or B tier last time I did it, but 11C made me genuinely really care about Rosita. Like I genuinely think she is one of the more interesting characters in this show. She's not S, definitely not S, but she's pretty good. I don't know, like her death especially, right? I think her death was one of the only deaths in the whole show to actually make me cry, which was so surprising to me. Like I didn't expect that person to have such an impactful death. But yeah, she she did for me at least. She definitely did. I think pre season nine she's not that interesting, but once you get season nine with the time jump and everything, she becomes a more prominent member of of the communities. And I just yeah, she's a lot better. Eugene might be unpopular, but I don't really think he's that great. I I kind of just get annoyed by him most of the time. He definitely came back around in more recent seasons, so I'm gonna put him in B just because he's not as bad as he was in like season seven and eight. Did not like the whole Saver storyline with him. Did not like that at all. And before that, he was just there. But after season nine with the time jump and all, just like Rosita, he did become a lot better of a character. I didn't like his season 11 stuff, though. I didn't like how 
pretty much the whole season he's just talking to Max all the time and the whole relationship was was fine but I just didn't I didn't care as much about it you know compared to some of his storylines before so yeah he's not nearly as good as some of these other characters but he's okay he's all right I don't, I don't mind him too much um this guy uh, Joe cool little character but I don't really he's a good villain I'll, I'll give him that he's a good villain um, so I'll put him in B, just because he's a good villain. He was interesting. He was there for like a couple episodes, but I mean, just for that scene alone where Rick gets to bite out his throat, I think that's enough to consider him a pretty decent villain. Again, you have to keep in mind, I'm not rating them how good of a person they are, it's how interesting they are. And also interesting based on the expectation, like I was saying before. So obviously, Carl had way more to do than him, but I expect more from Carl, therefore he's lower. You, you get what I mean. Gareth. Gareth was a pretty interesting villain too. I, I don't it's not like I you know actually I'm gonna put him in B because it's not that the character is that interesting it's that his story and his motivations are interesting the whole cannibal thing is obviously interesting I like how they touched on that topic in that season but the character itself isn't like that deep or anything he just likes to eat people because he, he doesn't he's too lazy to get regular food <laughs> like that's basically what it is and it's great I like it it's a great storyline but it's it's not the character necessarily Dawn can go Fuck herself, she's going in D. I do not like the Dawn storyline, it's terrible, she's boring, she's just... She, don't like her. Uh, Noah, Noah's okay. I'm gonna put him in C, he's alright. I put him right here, my face might be covering that, but yeah, he's in C, he's okay. I'm not gonna put him in I don't care, because I do care, but... I'll put him in C. So unfortunately, whoever made this tier list forgot to put Father Gabriel on it, so... I kind of forget to talk about Father Gabriel. He would 100% be in A tier though, so just keep that in mind. Father Gabriel is in A tier. Love that man. Definitely has one of the best arcs in the entire show. The way he goes from being a complete coward to just a complete badass. Aaron, A tier. He didn't quite get into S tier, but he, he definitely is deserving of A tier. I think, again, just like Rosita and Eugene, the post season nine story with you know after the time jump i think he definitely became a lot better and more interesting especially after he lost his hand his arm or whatever that was a really interesting twist for the character um, but before that with like season seven and eight and you know even five and six he's okay he's fine he's, he's there but he's not nearly as good i feel like as he gets later on i loved his his position in the whisper of war he definitely had a lot to do there and he looks awesome he looks just like comic rick so that that's a plus and I like a story. I like also that he was able to uh, basically adopt Gracie as his own child. That, that's cool. Um, Eric, I'm not going to put him in like a low spot, but I'm just going to say I don't care because I don't. <laughs> he's, he's really just there to be Aaron's uh, boyfriend or were they officially married? I don't think they were, right? I forget. I don't know. Whatever. He's just there for that, really. He doesn't have any specific storylines in his own right, so I don't... Don't really think there's much to say about him other than that. Deanna is pretty great. Yep, she's cool. Uh, put her in, uh, I guess, B? B sounds good. No, I'm... Yeah, B. She's on the level of these characters. But she's alright. She's cool. She, I like how she basically passes over the leadership torch to Rick, you know? Uh, Spencer? Uh, he, he had some interesting storylines. I'll give him that. I'll put him in B as well couple interesting storylines. Enid, missed opportunities all around with her. I really wish they could have done more, but I'm not going to say she's bad. I'm just going to put her in C. Olivia, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Jesse, I, I like Jesse quite a bit. Um, I'll put her in B. Yeah. Two of Rick's love interests are in B actually, but Michonne, Michonne's the top tier love interest though. We all know that. But Jessie was okay. I, I liked her, you know, she didn't have any deep stories, but I did like her relationship with Rick. Well, like, relationship in air quotes. I mean, they're only together for like a couple episodes, really, but she was okay. It was just cool. You also had Pete, which he had an interesting story. I, I like that whole storyline with him. Again, I'm not rating it on the how good of a person they are. They would, this the dude would be in the fucking F garbage tier if that was the case. But as a character, he's he's okay. He, he, he has a role to play and it works. Uh, Sam, this kid kind of just pissed me off, to be honest. <laughs> he just kind of pissed me off. But he, he's a kid, so I'll put him in C. Uh, Ron kind of pissed me off too. But I'll, uh, he didn't like. he's not a bad character or anything. Owen, the wolf guy, he's okay. I'll put him in C. Nicholas, 
Also okay, I'll put him in C. Denise. Eh, she's okay. Put her in C. <laughs> Heath? The fuck happened to you, Heath? I'll put you in C also. Scott, I'm sorry. You, you don't really do shit in this show, to be honest. Um, Jesus. I know I'm gonna get hate for that. I'm gonna get hate for that. Look, maybe it's just because I'm a really big fan of Comic Jesus, but he does not at all feel like Comic Jesus, and he doesn't at all portray it in a way that I feel like is is good. It's not the actor. The actor's great. I just... I don't know. He doesn't feel like Jesus to me. He really never has, and they don't do anything with him that I particularly thought was that interesting. I loved his death, though. I thought that was interesting. It was cool the way it was done everything like that, but it doesn't have much impact on the series in terms of, like, him dying himself. Um... They probably could have done a little romance between him and Aaron if they kept him around a little bit longer, but they kind of decided to just destroy that possibility by killing him off. And yeah, they don't do they don't do as many cool ninja scenes with him. You know, like in the comics, he has some really cool ninja scenes. In the, in the, sh the show, he does like one or two scenes that are kind of ninja-like, but not as nearly as much as I was hoping. So uh, he's just a disappointment. That's what he is to me. He is a disappointment. That's why he's going in D. Gregory, um, I love the actor. Like, the actor's really damn good, so he's deserving of... Um, I feel like they could have found a way to make him more complex in Season 9 and make him not be, like, a terrible, god-awful person, but they they did anyway. I'll put him in C. I'll put him in C. They kind of just kept him as being an awful person, as usual. I kind of wish they did a little bit, not like a redemption arc, but more of like a... He was more complex, you know, going forward. Cal, uh, I don't care about you. Eduardo, don't really care either. Uh, Dr. Carlson, they had like one episode where he was substantial and he didn't do shit. His death was stupid too. I'm putting him in D for that. Just for his stupid death. Dwighty Boy. Dwighty Boy is pretty cool. He's in Fear the Walking Dead, but he does not feel like the same person in Fear the Walking Dead at all. I'm going to put him in A though. He's, he's pretty awesome. He, he has a lot of cool stories. Just getting to see someone on the savior side turn over to the, the our side to help was pretty cool. A lot of other characters have that happen too, but he, he was, you know, one of the first. Simon is a pretty great villain as well, so I'm gonna put him in A. He's not he's not an S tier villain, but he's he's up there. He's definitely up there. Obviously, Stephen Ogg just completely nails the performance. That's for sure. I mean, he, he feels just like fucking Trevor from GTA. So, I mean, if you if you wanted Trevor from GTA and, and Walking Dead, there you go. You got him. He's pretty cool. I like how different he is from Negan as well. He doesn't feel like Negan at all, which makes him feel like such a great, you know, kind of counterpart villain to, to Negan. It's, it's really cool how they do that. And of course, next up, we have the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man, Negan. He's S tier. I mean, he's got to be S tier. You can't possibly tell me that Negan does not deserve the S tier. Negan is fucking phenomenal. He is the best villain in the show. He is one of the best characters. He's my second favorite character. Why am I wearing this? I didn't... <laughs> when in the fuck did I put this headset on? But Negan's storyline, I mean, just going from being this just evil, despicable person who just bashes two of some of our favorite characters heads in right in front of everyone else who loves them and then we get to see him just being this completely hilarious comedic person in the next following two seasons and then we start to see some human sides of him in season eight and then you eventually get to see him just full-on kind of become a better person in in seasons nine through eleven like in no way do i think he's a good person even in those seasons like i don't feel like he's fully redeemed himself i never did really do like yet yeah, he becomes better but he still did what he did and it was awful and he can't possibly ever you know redeem that really but he just just getting to see him kind of almost feel bad about it. he completely feel bad about what he did to maggie he, he he feels so sorry for it it's a great story i think they could have definitely have done it a little bit better Maybe made it a little bit more smooth because from season 10, I loved him in season 9 and 10, but I do think in season 11, he kind of feels like he changed a little too much. Like from season 10 to 11. And they do a couple of weird things where they have him like let Maggie essentially get killed, but she obviously doesn't get killed. But like he basically was just okay with her getting eaten by walkers. And then the next scene, he's like, well, I thought you were going to do that to me. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do it to you. It's first like, but then they make us 
you know, see him as a like a like a redeemed person later on. I just, it never felt like it fit. I don't know. They could have done something better there. I think that's the only issue I have with this entire character. Everything else is phenomenal. He, he's perfect. Otherwise, so he's an S tier character for sure. Jeffrey Morgan is fantastic at it. Don't even remember her name. Um, she had like the barcode on her neck. <laughs> I, I don't really care. I don't know. She didn't really have any storylines, so I'll put her there. Arat, I'm sorry, I don't really care either. DJ, don't really care either. Um, Ezekiel, he's going in the A tier. He's pretty cool. I think he was way, way better in seasons 7 and 8, but even a 9, he was pretty good. I just, I don't know if I liked him that much after Henry died, to be honest. I think he kind of started to drop my ranking a little bit just a little bit just a little bit but he's still still pretty great i still love him i think he's definitely one of the better new characters for sure i think carrie Payne does a great job with the role so i don't know i like him the whole cancer thing too was was interesting it was definitely something new but i don't know he's okay jerry is just so much fun to watch he doesn't really do anything that great though in the show like he's not that important or anything but He's just fun. He's fun. He's lighthearted. He's he's a good time. He's a good time. So I'll put him in B for sure. Nabila, I'm sorry. I don't care. You're, you're really just Ezekiel's love interest. Richard has a little bit of a storyline, but I never really liked it too much. It kind of felt like his character was very one note. He was, he was all about just let me let me kill the savers. I need to kill them. I'm, I don't really give a shit. So I'm putting him in D. Um, This dude, Benjamin, right? He was okay. Let's we'll see. Uh, Henry. Henry's okay. My, he's all right. He's a lot better than people make him out to be. Um, I like that little storyline with with him and Lydia. So you know he was cool for that. But that was about it. I mean, season nine, Henry was probably where I think he deserves to you know get the B tier rating. Before that, he wasn't that great when he was you know younger and such. But I, I like him in season in season nine. I gotta say. Uh, we have Diane here. I don't really know. You have like no character to you, but you're always present. So I have to say, no, you don't have a, no, you don't do much. I'm putting, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Gavin, uh, he was a cool villain, I guess, but not, not, not better than C. Jared was so fucking annoying. And I would have liked his character as a villain more if they killed him off a little bit faster. Because I think it would have been more satisfying. But they took way too long to finally kill him off. Sydney, she disappears. So I'm going to put her in D just because she fucking disappears. Like, why does she do that? This, this girl, oh my god, I hated her. I don't know, she bothered the hell out of me. There was nothing about her I found interesting. And every time she's on screen, I just, I wanted to just throw a rock at her foot. Um, Beatrice... I like the actress, even though she had like two scenes. Um, so I'll put her in C. And then Rachel, she also disappears, presumably dead. Yeah, I don't know. She doesn't really do much. But I'm not as annoyed by her disappearance as I am with her. So I'll put her there. Uh Jules, don't care. You're the you're just Luke's love interest. Um Jadis. She's not that bad. I'll put her in C. She's not that bad. Sorry I'm not talking much about every character, but we'll be here for fucking three years if we do that, so... <laughs> I'm only really talking about the characters I really, really like or, or have something profound to say about them. Alden has one of the worst deaths in the whole series, but I do think he has a decent character to him, so I'll put him in B. I think he's deserving a B tier at the very least. Um, I don't know even know your name. I know who you are, but I just I don't remember your name, so you're gonna go there. This dude also, Justin, I don't care. Sadiq, he was okay. I never absolutely loved this character though, to be honest. I, I'll put him in C. Kind of don't like that he died, even though the death was an interesting twist with whole, the whole Dante being a whisperer thing, but I didn't like how they killed him off though. Earl, he was okay. Put him in C. Tammy Rose, you're also gonna go in C. Gracie, you'll go in C as well. You're mostly with the kids in C. A lot of the kids are in C because I just don't. Yeah, same with RJ. I mean, you're, you're just a kid. Uh, you don't do much. <laughs> Magna, I fucking despise how they handle her character because she was so interesting in season nine. Like, I'm not so interesting, but she was. She had something to her. I was like, oh, this is a cool little character. And they do jack shit with her. 
She's fucking staring into my soul though. I don't like that. Like look at her fucking picture. Like it's staring me in the eyes. I actually don't like that. But I feel like this character is so mishandled. I don't want to put her in D because she's not like a bad character, but like why couldn't you have done more with her? She could have been one of the best if you did more storylines. But Yamako actually does get some story. And I'm gonna put her in B because she genuinely does have some interesting storylines in season 11. But Magna really doesn't. She doesn't do shit. Um, Connie is probably the best out of those five characters. But even her, she doesn't have that many stories. She's just a really, she's just a sweetheart. And obviously having a deaf character does bring an interesting dynamic to the show as well. And so I do enjoy her presence in the show. But she's not, she's not going to go higher than B. Um, Kelly, I'll put in C along with Magna. She doesn't do that much, but... Dude, Magna's staring in my fucking eyes. I don't like it. Like, she's, she's staring into my fucking soul. Uh, who got that picture? Luke also doesn't really do much, but I love the actor. So I want to put him in B just because I love the actor, but I, he doesn't really do much. He's not really in the show for much of it either. So I'm going to have to put him in C, unfortunately. Uh, Lydia. Underrated character. Putting her in... Oof. I don't know. So I loved her in season 9 and 10, but they do nothing with her in season 11 that I really found that interesting. So that kind of makes me want to drop her a little bit. But no, she was interesting enough to the point where I, I, yeah, I'm gonna, I liked her character. I liked the whole dynamic where she was, you know, of course, Alpha's daughter and, you know, Alpha abused her and she did not want to go back, but she felt like she had to because she knew it would start conflict if she didn't. And then eventually when they do rescue her from Alpha, it does cause conflict and she feels this immense guilt for what happened. And I think that's a great storyline for this character. So she's awesome. She's a great character. But I was just not happy with the fact that they didn't do much with her in season 11. They did have her, you know, getting her arm bit and everything, but that was about it. Alpha, great villain. I'm not going to put her on the likes of, you know, Negan and the governor, though. So she's not going in S tier, but she is a fantastic villain. She is incredibly evil. I would say the most evil character in the entire show, probably, right? Maybe. I don't know. She's up there. She's one of the most evil ones for sure. Um, but I, I loved her character. I loved how Negan was the one to kill her and the performance from Samantha Morton was just profound. It was, it was amazing all around. She was, she was a great addition to the, to the series for sure. Beta is going to go right up, right beside her. She's just as interesting as Alpha, in my opinion. I don't think either one of them is as, or is more interesting than the other by that much. I think Alpha is just slightly better than Beta. Beta is just, you know, bit more of a physical threat, whereas Alpha is more of a mental threat. I like that a lot. I like how they have different strengths and weaknesses there. I think that's a really awesome dynamic between the two of them. I just wish they gave Beta a fight versus Negan, and I honestly, if he had a fight versus Negan, he might be an S. He might. He honestly might, but they didn't give us that fight, so they, he can go fuck himself. He, <laughs> this Highwayman guy is the most wasted dude in the entire series. He does nothing, but he's just wasted because he's, he's there for like one episode. For what? For what? Uh, Gage, he had a character to him, I guess, but he doesn't, he doesn't do anything that great. I'll put him in C. Dante, I like the twist, but it was just short-lived, I guess. You know, I'm going to see. It's just too short-lived for my liking. Gamma, I don't know. Didn't like a single one of her storylines. Gonna be honest. I never found her to be interesting. Never really cared. And my expectations were higher because she was a big part of that, you know, season 10. Brandon's in like one episode, but he's a pretty sinister guy. So I'll put him in C just for that. <laughs> uh, Virgil, where the fuck did you go, Virgil? I don't like you, though. You're there for one episode, maybe two episodes, and you don't do shit. I don't know. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He's just there for like, what's the point? I don't know. Um, Princess? That's a tough one, Princess, honestly. I love the actress. I love how fun and bubbly she is, especially when she's first introduced. But after she's introduced, she doesn't she doesn't do much. And when she does do stuff, it's just scenes between her and Mercer. So I can't say I like her character that much. I'm just going to put her in C. Yeah, I'll put her in C. Some people might disagree with that. I'm sorry if you guys like Princess a lot, but I um, don't Herschel, he's gonna go with the kids and see. I'm sorry, he doesn't have much of a character to him. Lucille, so important for Negan's character, but she's just in that one episode. I don't know, I just, I really like 
what they did with her though. So I want to like just because he's a one episode does not mean she has to be low. You know, Gareth's only one episode and he or a couple episodes and he's here. Yeah, I'll, I'll put her in B. You know, she's deserving of B. She has a big impact on Negan's character, obviously. Um, I'll put her. I'll put her in B. I'll put her in B. Elijah, very much underused. I'm throwing you in C. You're kind of just there. Leah, very much an underrated character. I don't get the, you know, I, I don't love the Reaper storyline. I don't, but I don't think Leah is necessarily a bad part of it. I do think it's an interesting little storyline. I do think the little thing between her and Daryl is interesting to a degree. And I like how she kind of turned, you know, against the Reapers, at least for against Pope. But then she also does care for the other Reapers. So she still was a problem for the group. And then eventually Daryl had to kill her. I do like that story. I do think it's strong. I do think it's well thought out. I just don't like the Reaper storyline as a whole, but that doesn't mean Leah's a bad character. So I'm putting her in B. Pope, though, is a very bad villain. He's not interesting at all. He's boring. He just has these same speeches. He's just like, oh, God, oh, I'm not going to kill you. Oh, oh the God, you don't love God. Oh, oh. It's just, I just, it just, I, it, no, I don't like it. The actor's, the actor's great. He's great, but I just don't like him that much. Mercer is probably the best character introduced since, like, I don't even know, quite some time. He's going in A tier. Mercer is a solid, solid character. He's definitely the best new character from season 11, so that's huge plus. Good, good shit, Mercer. The actor is great, perfect casting, and he actually does have some interesting storylines. He has this kind of dilemma where he doesn't know what to do because he does realize that the Commonwealth is doing some bad shit. But he, he has a position, he has a role that he plays, and he feels like he needs to stick to it, but he's not sure. So he kind of just goes back and forth between whether or not he should help um, the group or not. And I do like how eventually he obviously does, and he, he's pretty awesome. He has great storylines there. I'm putting him in A tier. He's deserving of it, for sure. Max, on the other hand, I don't find to be that interesting. She's just kind of there, I guess. Lance is a pretty good villain. I'll put him in B. He's solid. Pamela, not as interesting. I'm putting her in C. I do think Lance has more uh, traits to him that make him more of a villain than Pamela does. But I'm, Pamela, I feel like they could have done more with her. I'm not going to lie. Um, Sebastian as well. I just, eh. They're okay, I guess. But Lance just, I like the I like the outside of the Commonwealth walls stuff that Lance does. Whereas Pamela's just always in Commonwealth. So that's why I don't find her to be as interesting. Tommy, he's kind of just there, and Annie, um, I know you're, you're just kind of, uh, Negan's wife, to be honest, that's all you really do, so I'm gonna have to put you in C, okay, well there you go, that is the completed ranking of all of the characters, all of the main characters, these I don't care ones, these are just characters that, to me, they're just not main enough to really consider them as characters in any significant way, so that's why I put them down there. Um, D, these are ones that, like, they had a character to them, they definitely had an arc of some sort, not, not honestly arc, but they were there for a decent amount of time, they had enough screen time for me to warrant them a, a character, but I just do not like them that much, I don't like their character, I don't like what they did with them, I don't like how they handled them, pretty much at all, there's not many positives I can say about, like, any of these characters down here. I should have been showing it better, I was kind of covering it up, but th there you go. <laughs> Then we get into C, and these are just like characters that are just like, okay. Like I, I have some issues with some of them. Some of them are just a little bit more prominent than some other characters, but uh, I don't know. They're just characters I don't absolutely love. Like some of them are just literally just there just to like say a couple of lines here and there, but Magnus still staring into my soul. I really don't like it. And that's why I put most of the kids there. Cause like, I don't, they don't have any big arcs or anything like that. And then you have a couple characters like Carl that does have some arcs, but I don't particularly like a lot of them. And you have Sasha again, has some arcs, but again, I don't like a lot of them. So it's just, you know, characters are just kind of hard to talk about much because I just, I don't know, they're, they're okay. I don't have any major issues with them like I do with the D tier characters. B tier are all characters that I do like. I think they have good stories to them. I do think they have a good part to play in the series, whether it's big or small. Like, Joe is a very small part to play, but he's a great part to play, obviously. Um, do like the little storyline they do with them. A, these are amazing characters. Like, I love these characters. These are great additions to the show. They are all characters I would say are pretty pretty up there in my, my ranking. 
And then S obviously are the, the goats. These are the ones that I will always love and I think they have the best storylines possible. They are definitely the characters I am most interested in watching when I am watching this show. So yeah, let's order it within the tiers, at least for some of them. I'm not gonna go so hard maybe on all of these because I don't know how the fuck you rank all these down here, but at least for S, I know Rick's gonna be in first, then we're gonna have Negan, then we're gonna have Maggie. Then on fourth, I think I'm honestly gonna put I want to say Shane, the governor, and Morgan. I do like villainous characters quite a bit. That's why you have three villains all up here. <laughs> um, then we're going to have probably Daryl, Car Carol, Herschel, Glenn, and Michonne. I think I like Glenn more than Michonne. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah, that works. And I'm not going to rank the rest because it's, I don't know, it, you're kind of splitting hairs at that point, to be honest. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I will see you on my next one. Wait a minute. I just realized this list doesn't have Father fucking Gabriel. As I said before, he would go into A tier. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like the video. I will see you on my next one. Peace out.